My dear friends, as the coronavirus or COVID-19 global pandemic progresses, we are faced with such unique challenges. I know you miss worshipping together, fellowshipping together, meeting sisters and brothers in the Lord, and enjoying each other's fellowship in church, or over Bible study, or even over coffee. We are, after all, a people called by God to love one another and to love Him together. And yet, this is a decision that we have made and not made lightly. This pandemic has forced the government to put in place the Movement Controlled Order or Perintah Kawalan Pergerakan. Some people are, of course, not too happy with it. They miss their freedom to move around. They are finding it difficult to stay at home. But this is necessary to contain the spread of the virus. As a church, we took this decision to suspend our church services and gatherings ahead of the government move, having taken professional advice from our medical experts and after much prayer and discernment. Initially, we were criticized as not having faith. Some said we were panicking. No, my dear friends, we don't conclude blindly. Rather, as I said, we prayed, we seek the Lord's guidance and leading. We took advice, and so we wish to advise that you too, in your own way, adhere to the government's advice. Stay at home. Practice the best hygiene protocol. We will be all right. This pandemic, as we are beginning to realize it now, is of such a scale we have not seen before. So far, over 260,000 cases have been reported in many countries the world over, with over 10,000 deaths. Here, closer to home, there have been over 900 cases, with two deaths so far. Sadly, these numbers will only increase in the days ahead. For that reason, again, I urge that we adhere to the advice given by the Ministry of Health, adhere also to the advisory that we have given. Please, please cooperate. May I remind you at this point again, dear friends, that the very reason why we took this step early on is the awareness that our medical facilities and personnel are inadequate indeed in facing these crises. Should there be any further wave of infections, fatalities sadly will be very high indeed. As Christians, as good Christians, we can be the best citizens. That is our calling after all. The epistle that we have just heard read from Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8 to 9 reminds us, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that, one, so that no one can boast. 
and listen to the next part of the verse. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Yes, dear friends, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9, reminds us of our special calling. God has created us in Christ Jesus for good works. We can, therefore, be the best citizens and be proud of it for the glory of God. This is the way of life that God has prepared for us beforehand. Yes, being good for the glory of God, being good for our nation, this is our way of life. And so, in facing this pandemic, in facing this crisis, how are we to respond? How are we to live out the gospel as Christ's people? I want to suggest three P's. The first P is peace. In our gospel reading just heard read again from John chapter 14, this is what Jesus assures us. Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you. Not at the world do I give it. So let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Yes. The words of our Lord Jesus, his promise, his assurance. In all circumstances, says the Lord, we have the peace of God, the peace given to us, the peace gifted to us by our Lord Jesus. And this is his own peace, the Father's peace, which God in Christ is living with us. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Jesus said, I leave this peace with you. I don't just give it for a moment and take it away. I leave it with you. And so as Christians, as believers, as disciples of our Lord Jesus, as children of God, we have Christ's peace, the peace of God, even in the face of unrest, in the face of uncertainty, in the face of worries and anxieties. We have God's peace. He leaves this peace with us. We have the inner peace in us because God leaves it with us. And this peace is real. This peace is real because it is from God himself. Jesus goes on, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I know, I know as humans, our hearts are naturally troubled and worried at this time. We are afraid, we are worried, we are anxious, we are troubled, both for ourselves as well as our loved ones. We are worried, we are anxious about tomorrow, about our future. We are afraid. But Jesus assuredly and lovingly says to us, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Why? Because God is in control. Jesus, our Lord, he is Lord over everything that happens, that takes place. He is Lord over tomorrow. He reigns supreme. Just a little thought. The name of the virus that 
you and I are fearful of at this time is called coronavirus. The word corona from Latin means crown. The shape of the virus. Let us ponder for a little while. Who has the crown of our life? Who reigns over our life? For some of us, perhaps, what has been the crown, the reign, who reigns over our life? What has been the most important thing? For some, it could be some sports, others, money, or family, or self. For the self, we reign, the I being the most important. For sports, money, prestige, they too, perhaps in our lives, could have been the crown. There is a message here. Let us know, let us acknowledge that the reign of God, that must be over our lives, all that we do, all that we think, because our God reigns. He is to be the King. And so let Him reign. Let Him reign. Let Him have the crown of our life, of our joy. And so in facing this coronavirus, we have the assurance of Christ. We have His peace. Because our God who reigns is with us. He is, after all, God Emmanuel. He is with us. And so we have no cause to be fearful, no cause to panic, no cause to be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid says our Lord Jesus. Our God is a God of comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles. The reading from our Old Testament earlier, taken from Isaiah, reminds us of who our God is. He is not just a comforter. He is a God so close to us. He calls each one of us by name. We are special to him. Let us be assured, sisters and brothers. Yes, while this coronavirus is taking us into waters we have never navigated before, we know that God is with us. He has gone ahead of us. He is walking beside us. He is deep within us. And so instead of worrying about what may or may not happen next, let us know that this God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, is right here, right now, with us. The second P, prayer. Prayer is our lifeline. Prayer helps us in our daily living. Prayer connects us to God. Prayer is the means by which we can bring the whole of ourself and the whole of this world, even of those who do not know God, to God for God's intervention. And so in facing this crisis, I want to remind you that this is a great time for us to pray together. Every crisis in our world is an open door for God to show his power, to show his mercy, to show his love. And likewise for us, every crisis in the world is an open door for us as God's people to show God's same love that others 
may experience and know who God is. While the current environment around the world is one of fear, one of blaming game, our God is in control. Now, more than ever before, is an opportunity for us as God's people, as church, to outshine the darkness and serve people in pain and in need. And all this we can do by prayer and through prayer. The words of the prophet Nahum is a little reminder. In Nahum chapter 1 and verse 7, Nahum says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. The Lord is good. And so we have the assurance, the confidence in praying to him. He is a stronghold in the day of trouble. Yes, even as we face this coronavirus, the stronghold is here with us, God himself. As the world panics, it should hear our prayers. As the world shakes, it should watch you and I Christians praying, shining with faith. As the world worries, it should see us mount up with wings like eagles because of our faith in who our God is. As the world trembles, it should know our testimony that Jesus is in charge. Jesus reigns forever. And so, let us pray. And we can pray together. Again, in the quietness of our home, of our room, or wherever we find ourselves to be. We can pray and should pray that God will come and visit us, that God will come and intervene. And as we pray, wherever we are, we are also sharing the good news of the gospel. The Archbishop of our province, the Most Reverend Dato Melta, is calling us, especially on this day, Sunday, 22nd of March, to be a day of prayer, a day of fasting, for God's mercy, for God's intervention. And so I want to invite you to pray, to fast, to come before God, pleading with him that the Lord will indeed, in his love and mercy, bring forth his healing touch, his healing power. Let us fast. Let us pray. For we are in a battle of spiritual warfare, whether we like to admit it or not. And so I ask you, I want to encourage you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For we know that we already have the victory in Christ. Be a people of prayer. Prayer is God's powerful weapon. The third B, a little reminder of who we are, people of God. Church hasn't actually been cancelled. Worship has not been cancelled. We are the church wherever we are, and we can worship anywhere and everywhere we find ourselves to be. Church is the living body of Christ. As the people of God, we are the church. Whenever and wherever we are conscious of God's presence, there we can offer worship. And so, my dear friends, 
I want to remind us that we are the people of God. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus guarantees his church, you and I, the people of God, victory in all circumstances. And so, as a people of God, God is using these moments to hone us more than ever before to be intentional, to be intense in our relationship with him and in the kingdom purpose and mission. As a people of God, God is calling us to love our neighbors. We are to take care of one another. As God's people, we can live out the gospel and should live it out more than ever before now. Now is the time. Times like this give us a great clarity and focus as God's people as we think, as we consider and meditate upon the call that God has for us. And so, don't miss what God wants us to do with our life. Let us live as God's people to his glory and for his honour. I want you to remember too, that God always does his greatest work in the most difficult moment, both of our personal life as well as our communal life together. And this coronavirus crisis is no different. The world and the community around us is looking for people of faith to speak a word of hope into their lives as well as to our wider community. And we have that message of hope. Now is the time to share it with unequal boldness. Not panic, but complete trust in God. For God is our hope. Another question that I have been asked is, how are we to serve our community in practical terms? especially those who are struggling because of the restriction order. Yes, there are many people whose lives are badly affected. The laborers, those who are paid daily wages, we feel for them, we are sorry for them. But it isn't enough simply to feel for them or being sorry for them. I want to remind you that we have in the diocese the Bishop's Land Appeal, a relief fund which you are encouraged to contribute to. We will do our part to assist our neighbours. That is our calling. Yes, obviously we cannot assist everyone. We do not have the financial means, but every little help. And so, in the last few days, quietly, discreetly, we have gone around with small envelopes, giving little help. I want to encourage you to help us to do that. And you can do the same in your own setting, wherever you are. When you see someone in need, share. When you see someone in need, offer. When you see someone in need, bless them and bless them in practical terms. And so, my dear friends, brothers and sisters, let us keep our eye on Jesus. Let us, as we come to know him better, as we draw closer to him at this time, know that he wants to work in us and through us. Let us stay close to him, even though we may not congregate as a church. Let us remain faithful. May the peace of God and his healing power be with us as we pray 
for his intervention as we ask for an end to this pandemic. The Lord bless you. Amen.